Madam? Yes, we're ready. It's 6 o'clock, I think. So I'll read the statement of compliance. This meeting is being held in conformity to the Open Public Meeting Act. Proper public notice of this meeting was published in the local papers on November 8th, 2014 and November 9, 2014. If any board member or member of the public in attendance believes that this meeting is in violation of the Open Public Meeting Act, the Hoboken Board of Education requests that they make a statement at this time. The board wishes to make those in attendance aware that this meeting is being recorded on video and will be broadcast by the board at a later date on cable television channel 77 and Fios channel 46. The Hoboken Board of Education is committed to preserving the decorum of the public process and is mindful that we live in the electronic age of computers, cell phones, and other electronic communication devices. Nevertheless, we respectfully request that all meeting participants kindly silence their electronic devices during the course of the meeting, and if use of the device is necessary, we ask that you please leave the meeting room if you need to conduct personal business. Thank you. If we could please rise for a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Shall I call the roll? Yep, call the roll. Mr. Biakamano? Present. Ms. Evans? Here. Dr. Gold? Present. Mr. Klubfell? Here. Ms. Mitchell? Here. Ms. Sobolev? Here. Ms. Stromwall? Here. And Ms. Tyroller? Here. So, okay, can I immediately ask for a motion to close? Or we, so we are, we're going into closed session now to discuss uh, update, a legal update, and also to meet with uh, the search firm. So, it's, so the, to discuss pending litigation and personnel matter. Okay. So we're going to close for pending litigation and a personnel matter. Uh, I move that we go into executive session. Second. Second by Jean. Jean Marie. Call roll. Mr. Biancomano? Aye. Ms. Evans? Yes. Dr. Gold? Yes. Mr. Klubfell? Yes. Ms. Mitchell? Yes. Ms. Sobolev? Yes. Ms. Stromwall? Yes. And Ms. Tyroller? Yes. Okay, so closed. Okay, um, so we are going to open the meeting, have recognition. And then, unfortunately, we have to go back into closed session, and then we'll resume the, meeting, the uh, open meeting after that. So, Bill? Call a roll on uh, just being seated and uh, coming back into session. Yeah. Mr. Biancomano? Aye. Ms. Evans? Yes. Dr. Gold? Yes. Mr. Klubfell? Yes. Ms. Mitchell? Yes. Ms. Sobolev? Yes. Ms. Stromwall? Yes. And Ms. Tyroller? Yes. Okay, so at this point we are going to proceed with the recognition portion of the meeting. <coughs> Dr. Hernandez? Good evening. Before I, I start with the uh, student recognition, I would also like to recognize Tim Callagy and his uh, maintenance crew and custodial staff for setting up this <laughs> auditorium. For, they worked really hard for a few days and Beautiful outcome. Thank you, Tim. Starting with our students of the month, uh, Brandt School, Pablo Maggie. <laughs> Come on up. Pablo. <laughs> yeah, go next to Dr. Hernandez. Very good. I don't know that. <laughs> Pablo is an exceptional student. He is confident and hardworking English language learner who always strives to do his best. He has really shined this month with his model student behaviors and jolly personality. He loves learning and enjoys playing with all, the, with all of his friends he has made in kindergarten. We are so proud of Pablo. Shine on. Please join me in congratulating Pablo.
Our next student is a third grader from Collaboral School, Alexis K. Sayon. <laughs> Alexis is, a, is an exceptional, respectful, and well-mannered young lady. She succeeds and excels in all, all academic areas. She continues to go above and beyond to help her fellow classmates and teachers. She has proven herself to be a leader and a role model, both in her classroom and throughout Collaboral School. Overall, Alexis exhibits academic excellence, peer leadership, pride, and self-motivation. All of these attributes have led Alexis to represent our school as Collaboral School Student of the Month for October. Please join me in recognizing Alexis. Our next student is from Connors Elementary School, fourth grader, Emil Liano Leo. <laughs> Emil Liano is an exemplary student for the entire school district. He consistently demonstrates superior effort academically and shows leadership in helping other students achieve success as well. He is a member of the gifted and talented program at Connors as well as an active participant in the John Hopkins after school, after school program for math and reading. Emiliano is also a helpful candidate for the NJIT summer pre-college program. Although he excels academically, Emiliano has additional talents and interests. He plays on a travel so soccer team, loves to visit museums, and is an avid reader. He's always striving to further his abilities and seeks input on how to improve. Emiliano is an inspiration to everyone he meets, and this award is well deserved. Please join me in recognizing Emiliano. Our next student is a fourth grader from Wallace, George Kostopoulos. George, George is a hard worker. He enjoys learning new things and takes pride in work. George is helpful to his classmates and enjoys helping his teachers. George is a pleasure to have in class. His determination and dedication to learn and achieve is outstanding. Please join me in recognizing George our next student is our junior high school student, eighth grade, Michelle Tu. Michelle is dedicated and is an amazing writer. She is never happy with just doing well on assignments or projects. She wants to do better with every task. She is an excellent student and an excellent role model. She enjoys being a student at the Hoboken Junior Senior High School. Please join me in recognizing Michelle. Michelle. Last but not least, our senior from the Senior High School, Destiny Giddy. Destiny has done an excellent job learning the five stages of commercial creation. She has worked hard with her team to create a screenplay and storyboard to submit to our production company. She was a key player in working with the camera department and videotaped the footage needed for our first commercial at the high school. Destiny has also been directing the girls' soccer team, videographer, and capturing the last two games on video. Destiny is also a member of the Hoboken Junior Senior High School Hispanic Culture Club and Student Council. Please join me in recognizing Destiny. And thank you. That concludes the recognitions. Thank you, Dr. Hernandez. So we're going to go immediately into quotes, 
Uh, we apologize to the public. We have to go back into closed session, but we wanted to take care of the recognitions ahead of time in order to let the children go home and get a good night's sleep for school tomorrow. So um, uh, we are going into closed session to discuss personnel, personnel uh, items. For approximately? For approximately 45 minutes. We'll, be back. we'll make sure we're back at 8 o'clock. I, I, um, I move that. Second. Take the um, take roll. Yes. Mr. Biancamano. Aye. Ms. Evans. Yes. Dr. Gold. Yes. Mr. Cluffell. Yes. Ms. Mitchell. Yes. Ms. Sobolov. Yes. Ms. Stromwall. Yes. And Ms. Tyroller. Ready? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you for your patience. Um, so, uh, Bill, will you bring us out of closed session? Do we, have to, do we have to make a motion to come out of closed? No, we just take roll, right? Take roll. Okay. Mr. Biancamano? Aye. Present. Ms. Ms. Evans? Here. Dr. Gold? Here. Mr. Klepfell? Here. Ms. Mitchell? Here. Ms. Sobolov? Here. Ms. Stromwall? Here. And Ms. Tyroller? Here. Okay, so we're going to get started with the regular meeting, and we'll start with the superintendent's report. Where right. are you? Here you are. Right, right here. Um, I'd, I'd first like to say on, on this day, it's Veterans Day, and um, we, we want to express our sincere appreciation for all the veterans, you know, in Hoboken and every place else in the state and in the nation for their service to the nation uh, over the years. Um, you know, some districts are closed today, some are open, but um, they're always in our thoughts. And I wanted to make a comment about that. We appreciate the service that the veterans gave us uh, from the bottom of our hearts. So thank you very much. I don't know if anybody on the board wants to add to that, but I wanted to comment on that. Uh, I think you said it nicely. Thank you. Okay. Uh, one of the things that we're going to be um, submitting to the State Department is the statement of assurances for the CUSAC for this year. You know, as you know, we had the site visit last year, and we created the uh, district improvement plan uh, for that site visit. But every year, every district has to submit a statement of assurances. And our statement of assurance this year takes into consideration some of the things that we need to have in place, and we see to it now that we do have them in place, which hopefully then results in better results three years from now when we're site visited again. So that's on the agenda tonight. And I want to say also, we had a, a team representing Hoboken meet with the team from uh, Stevens Institute of Technology the other day. They have a lot of exciting programs, um, and they're dedicated to working with the city of Hoboken and with the school district in Hoboken on uh, creating a lot of opportunities for our students. And we're going to be looking forward to uh, working with them uh, more closely in the future so that we can implement some of those programs. Um, and that's it for my report. Okay, thank right. you. Uh, the business administrator's report? Yes, I have one, re one item. It's basically a follow-up from last meeting. Uh, as discussed at the prior regular meeting, uh, I had reported that HOPE's um, CAP had two financial audits conducted over the summer. Uh, they had a certain amount of findings. Uh, in those two reports, they created a corrective action plan. They were approved by their board, submitted to us tonight. It's on there for uh, consideration. It's 10.09. Uh, depending on how it, it goes tonight, as far as uh, approvals, uh, if it is passed and accepted by the board, it'll be presented and uh, placed on our website in the business administration area. That, that concludes my report. Thank you. OK, we're going to move on to committee reports. Uh, we'll start with Monica and uh, curriculum and programs. Uh, the curriculum meeting was held on November 5th at uh, 5.30 at the Demarest Conference Room and attendance was Dr. Hernandez, Dr. Gold, Ms. Tyroller, Ms. Ducanto, Mr. Bartlett, and myself. Um, we talked about Professional Development Day report. Um, there was positive feedback came back in the survey given to the staff. Um, Mrs. Ducanto and Mr. Bartlett spoke about the presenters that came in and gave presentations that day. They said it was an extremely positive event and the staff felt it was the most beneficial professional development day that they had to date and so they were looking forward to meeting the expectations for the next PD. 
Um, we talked about building park awareness, um, district-wide report. The report was presented and examples of park readiness were shown to committee members. Park Saturday prep was discussed, as was the online program where parents and students can view examples of park test questions. This will be a wonderful tool for our students to use at home to, be, uh, to get acclimated to the park. Um, we also discussed new teacher institute report. 32 teachers, their new and non-tenured, attended a one-hour professional development presentation. Topics included teacher evaluation tools and checking for understanding of lessons while teaching in the classroom. Uh, the staff had a good time and was eager to participate, and they're enjoying the presentations um, with the district. And that concluded our meeting. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Evans. So the Governance and Personnel Committee was held, uh, meeting was held on Monday, November 3rd from 10 to 12. In attendance was Dr. Brickell, myself, Ms. Fabian, Dr. Gold, Dr. Hernandez, Mr. Moffitt, Ms. Tyroller, and Ms. Soboloff. Um, Ms. Fabian updated the committee on pending legal matters, and the committee reviewed all agenda items for governance and personnel and recommended all items for approval by the board tonight. That's it. Thank you. And Mr. Klepfel, Finance? The Finance Committee did meet uh, on Wednesday, November 5th. Uh, with me were Dr. Gold, uh, Mr. Moffitt, uh, Ms. Sobolov, and Ms. Stromwell. Stromwall, I'm sorry. The, uh, I think there's only 10 items on the finance uh, agenda this week. And we reviewed them all. Most of them are normal payroll. Uh, claims and things. Uh, in my report to the board, uh, I did point out three things that probably some of the bears mentioning. Uh, Mr. Moffat did uh, talk about the hopes uh, uh, audits and, and, the, and the findings. Uh, so that's on the agenda. It's not. It's not a reflection on the district or our business office, but we take responsibility for it because the money flows through the state to them. Correct. Right. Um, and I think if people are looking at a, uh, an agenda out there, you'll see a normally large type uh, pointing out a, a list of uh, laser jets, uh, printers, and gateway equipment. Uh, we did ask about that, uh, and we were assured, and some internet research on my part points out that uh, this equipment is uh, borderline ancient, uh, <laughs> obsolete, and or broken. Um, so, uh, just for a ch chain of command, we're sort of decommissioning that and uh, approving permission to recycle appropriately and uh, uh, get rid of the equipment. Uh, and as I said, all every, everything we recommend for approval. Thank you. Okay, thank you, um, Ms. Sobolov. Ac uh, athletics, athletics and performing arts was held on Monday. <coughs> excuse me, uh, Monday, November third. In attendance was Dr. Hernandez. Uh, Ms. Tyroller, Ms. Mitchell, uh, Dr. Gold, and myself. Uh, senior, uh, under athletics, senior night, uh, we had uh, during the games, there were some football games and the soccer games where they were honoring the senior student athletes at, on those teams. So the football game included also the cheerleaders and any members of the band. And the rec department's junior Red Wings also participated in, in those events. So Hoboken High School won. Friday's game over Marist, which was 53-13. So now they were entering the 2014 NJSIAA playoffs, uh, second seed, I believe. Their next game is Friday against Glen Ridge. The girls' soccer are also in the, the state playoffs. Cross County track team is competing in the county tournaments. Swimming and bowling begin on November 15th. Indoor bas in basketball, indoor track, and cheerleading begin on December 1st. And for updated information regarding schedules and news, you can check the new Hoboken High School sport website, which is Hoboken Red Wings, one word, dot org. Uh, under Performing Arts, on Friday, October 17th, the uh, Student Drama Club held a well-attended family movie night. Uh, it was open to the entire community, and she raised $2,000 at that event for the Drama Club. On Thursday, October 30th, the same Student Drama Club held a children's theater workshop at Wallace, where Ms. Miller and some of the high school students worked with some of the elementary school students. I think there was about 25 students there. 
and uh, that was a fundraiser they raised about uh, $250 there. Uh, the drama department is currently preparing for the Stan uh, competition, which is poetry and speech, and the auditions for Greece began this week. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Mitchell, Facilities and Wellness. Uh, the Facilities Committee met on uh, November 3rd, 2014. In attendance was uh, Leon Gold, John Paproda from Sodexo, uh, and his uh, the account manager Dorian, uh, and Brian Beanie, also from Sodexo. Uh, Tim Callagy, the facility manager, and myself as chair. Uh, Sodexo, as requested, is reaching out more to uh, parents and students, and they'll be reaching out to the elementary PTOs uh, for feedback on their school uh, meals. They're also developing uh, several surveys, and they'll be distributed to students uh, on an iPad in the cafeterias, cafeterias uh, as well as uh, we, uh, off the district website. Uh, they're also offering a $5,000 Stop Hunger scholarship, and the information is available on the district website on the uh, students heading uh, off the website, off of uh, our district website. Uh, Sodexo will be holding a special Thanksgiving lunch for each of the uh, elementary schools, we'll be having a carving station and they'll be serving uh, turkey and fixins uh, at each school. Uh, it's usually it's gonna um, uh, happen around the, the third week of November. Uh, we're looking into whether Sodexo can serve dinner to the students in the theater program, those children that are working, uh, you know, practicing uh, in the evenings, as well as uh, the athletics. Uh, we're waiting for an answer from the state um, and the meals, uh, to see if the meals can be, uh, will be served uh, free to the students. Uh, at facilities, the scaffolding uh, at Brant, the bid spe spe specifications were sent to the state, and we expect the uh, request for bids to go out in uh, about a week. Uh, in October, there are uh, boiler inspections in all, uh, in all the school buildings, and they're all working properly for the winter months ahead. Uh, the Demarest boiler installation was completed. Uh, at the high school uh, stadium uh, on Jefferson Street, there is a shady strip of land that is frequented and abused by uh, people walking their dogs. And TD Bank has offered an $8,000 grant uh, for the environmental studies students at the high school. Uh, uh, to re redesign the parcel of land. So the environmental science students will compete uh, on the best design and implement, implement the best design. Mm -hmm. uh, the facilities uh, um, committee mm -hmm. were batting around ideas about uh, a stained glass foundation uh, for mm -hmm. uh, Demarest. Uh, and as, if you look above you uh, in the audience, you'll see that uh, there's some beautiful um, called uh, stained glass. Uh, it was um, analyzed a couple of years ago um, by Dr. Toback. Well, he didn't analyze it. I mean, he, he commissioned an, uh, an, an analysis. And it's not uh, Tiffany, but it's still a, just an absolutely beautiful glass. So we'd like to see if we could have the uh, com community perhaps uh, um, participate in a stained glass yeah, foundation. Uh, it's been covered with... Um, uh, what is it called? Uh, tar uh, in the 1930s, um, and it would be it would be a, a you know it's very similar to uh, the um, stained glass at the uh, train station, Hoboken train station. Um, let's see, the committee had a creative discussion on the ideas to renovate this ceiling, and uh, it would certainly add value to the school and uh, to the enjoyment of the community. And that's my report. Thank, Thank you. you. And just for the audience to know, the, uh, there is now a fourth floor, but originally when this building was built, there wasn't. Right. So that's why that was just like, you know, how train stations have the stained glass. And obviously the tar was done because of when they were tarring any light source, right, during the war. So, yeah, it's interesting. Thank you, Jim Ray. Okay, um, President's report. Um, we welcome to the new... Uh, meeting spot here in Demarest. Uh, it's good, we believe, because one, we don't have to move the meeting for a larger audience. There's plenty of seating. It gives Wallace School a dedicated music room. And the goal is to have us sit in a more collaborative uh, arrangement. And we actually have a little more room so we can even create a better you than uh, we anticipated. Um, what was interesting was when we decided to make the move 
to Demarest. Uh, almost simultaneously, uh, Mr. Klepfeld and I and Dr. Perkel all said, let's work on the seating arrangement so that it's more collaborative. So just for you for a little information, most boards do sit in a U. And we see this at, uh, you know, um, where you're looking at each other and conducting business eye to eye. And we actually see that with our council meetings, that they sit in a curved fashion so that they can talk to each other. Because the board meetings are really for the board to come together to discuss, share opinions, and vote on items. It's not supposed to, you know, that's part of what this is. This is our business meeting. So we're hoping that the you will help that. Um, and interestingly, for you, uh, Mr. Gagliardi, there was a period of time, Mr. Callaghi said, that the lawyer actually did sit with the board and uh, at some point. So this isn't completely foreign to um, Hoboken. Okay? Um, I know change always feels odd at first, but I'd just like to say I hope everyone, everyone on the board and as well as the audience, you know, look at this with an open mind and hopefully it'll be better for us in the end. Also, the other good thing is this is a beautiful room. It's a nice stage. This, the acoustics in here are of high quality when it was built. And this is another forum that could possibly be rented for use by the public. So I think this gives it a little bit more exposure. Okay, last Tuesday was election day. First, I'd like to thank everyone that ran for the board this year. I commend you for stepping up and running for an elected position. It is not an easy thing to do, and it takes a lot of time and motivation. And, you know, win or lose, we're, we're grateful for everyone that runs, because that's how we have the best selection and the most involvement in the school board, which is what we want. Just like we, the meeting the, in, by having the vote in November, we get more people out to vote, which makes them more interested, more interested and aware of what's going on in the schools. We also, it's also great to see people step up and run for school board. Uh, I'd like to congratulate Peter Biancavano on his re-election. Congratulate Monica Stromwell on her election, because this is her first time running, and also congratulate and welcome Sharon Angley, who's in the audience tonight, to the school board. Uh, Ms. Angley will be sworn in in January. So, congratulations. <laughs> and uh, Mrs. Rhodes Kearns is, is not with us this evening, but I just wanted to say that we are saying goodbye to uh, Mrs. Rhodes Kearns on the board. Mrs. Rhodes Kearns has been an elected trustee of the school board for nine and a half years uh, when she steps down in, in uh, January. And she also has served as a representative from the Hoboken Board of Ed in many county and state level committees, which has been great for the board. And so on behalf of the board and the citizens of Hoboken, I would like to thank uh, Mrs. Rhodes Kearns for her service. And just... Okay. Uh, and she, yeah, so and she Chair, also was, let me just, I, I left out, and she also, everyone should know, she was a very active parent as well. She was active on the PTOs and school committees, so we wish her well. It was just, uh, one, one small correction, it was 12 and a half years she served on this board. Oh, it was 12 and a half? Yep. Okay, I was trying to have somebody look that up. Thank yeah, you. No, just yeah. I apologize. She was 12 and a half years. Okay, so uh, now uh, questions from the board on committee reports. We'll start with you, Peter. Yes, thank you so much. Just one quick question, Mr. Moffat. I feel like this is a monthly routine here in terms of the scaffolding at Brand School. I know Ms. Mitchell in her report said that we're going out for bids next week. Um, what's the process from now, from now on? Because again, I just I reminded us last meeting that we only, have, we only paid for the scaffolding until the end of December and then it's gonna start costing us more money and I think it's wonderful that the SDA said they're going to pay us repay us in full for it. But I just want to uh, know what's the next steps in terms of what's gonna happen after the bids come in and, and so on and so forth for the facade to start actually being fixed. Well, let me address the first issue. Uh, we've given that uh, specification to include scaffolding, to change all the documents, which is similar last time I reported out. I haven't heard back from that final documentation package to include that. I anticipate that. Um, as far as going out to bid, I, I know we are preparing to go out to bid. 
uh, but that'll hit the streets. Obviously, depending on the response, uh, we could then decide if it's in budget or not in budget, and then uh, it would go before the board for approval. Um, again, since it's an SDA project, they do hold a lot of the, the reins. Uh, I still would like to see a little bit more information from the SDA uh, to move forward. I haven't really seen much of that, uh, but uh, the fact that they did uh, breathe life into the package, uh, I'm encouraged. Uh, but I have to say I remain a little skeptical, uh, and until I see the paperwork hit my desk, uh, I, I, I definitely uh, would question it. But uh, that's about the best I could do for a, right. a report, so, but in, if you'd like me to investigate further, I, I can. Yeah, please, because we are expected, it seems like we're going to be expected to take more money out uh, to keep the scaffolding up, because obviously the facade's not going to be fixed by uh, the end of December. Am I, am, am I correct, uh, Mr. Moffitt? Say that again? We're, we're going to be asked to be, uh, we're just probably going to be another resolution uh, for more money for scaff to keep the scaffolding up, obviously, um, after January, because the facade won't be fixed uh, by the end of the year. Yeah, I, I would say at this stage, since I don't have paperwork to review, I would say the timeline is going to be pushed out, but I could get a report to Please. you about timeline. Uh, I've just, uh, I don't have that information. And as long here. as we have the SDA word that they're going to reimburse us in that, full, that I'm fine That is what I hang my hat on. And okay. I do not have that at this stage to move forward with the project until I get that uh, right. done. Okay. So but I'll report possibly back. for the next meeting. Thank I'll you. Report back. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Picasso. Thank you. Oh, Ms. Tyrola. Um, any questions? Jean Marie? No. Irene? This side? Okay, yes. And uh, thank you for the clarification on the uh, the situation at Brandt, um, it's a shame that the district is at the mercy of the SDA on how, on how quickly we've been able to move on that. It's good to hear that, uh, that it's going out for bid. And so hopefully the SDA will continue to um, keep on it, which we've managed to get them to finally do. So, okay. So now um, we are up to Comments on agenda items from the public. So, uh, Mr. Moffitt, can you call the first person? And Tom, Mr. Klepfeld, will be keeping your time, and he'll do the little finger when you get to one minute. Right? I, I have three that are signed up at on the agenda items only. Three, three people. Three people. Okay. The first individual is Dr. Carolyn Oliver Fair. Good evening. I have no comments, suggestions, or questions at this time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Second speaker is uh, Patricia Waiters. Patricia Waiters, 1233 Park Avenue. These, um, for the computers on page 1 through 15, and the printers. Are these the computers that the 6th and 7th graders used to utilize? What are these computers? Printers, lasers, yeah. gateway. Yeah, these are all equipment. They're faxes, printers, desktops. That the um, school used that are from like 1998, they're extremely old, they're non-functioning and past their useful life. Uh, we had it reviewed uh, and, uh, I would say reviewed and, and, and analyzed, if you'd like to say, by our technology in, uh, coordinator. Uh, they're obviously not functional, we can't even redeploy them at this stage. Mm -hmm. We've taken parts from them, I call them cadavers on some level, because they've parted out and they were able to keep other machines going, but these are just the plastic and metal residual uh, uh, equipment that's left in its wake and uh, quite honestly we, we do have uh, an issue with space and we're trying to find space for storage, potential classrooms for the future. This will help us uh, clean up some of the rooms and uh, this is an accounting function where we identify these items that are in our inventory mm -hmm. and uh, to remove them the board has to take action to dispose of them um, and that's what you'll see tonight. Again these are doc uh, this document in the listing that uh, Mr. Kupfel had alluded to earlier, uh, again, include uh, faxes, printers, yeah. uh, monitors, and we're going to also comply with environmental regulations and, and uh, dispose of them accordingly. Thank you. All right, that's page one through, fifth, uh, one through 15. All right, down on page 11. The Hoboken Police Department. 
It says as needed for games 22,000 are not to exceed contract for 22,000. Do the school board pay the Hoboken Police Department? What, what agenda item is what? I'm, I'm going to check that out too with public safety. I never heard the school board paying okay. the police department. So Hoboken PD don't just provide their services for a game? I think she's talking about on the contracts. Yes, there's a contract, contract. Like the police department. department. Madam President? Yes. Yeah. yeah, this is something that we do every year. This is for security purposes for our various activities. Um, the police officers from the department will, will provide security at all these different functions. And yeah, we think it's a health and safety issue. So, $22,000. Okay. Yes, uh, that's we about can address it again later. Let's continue so you, don't use, you can use up your time, okay? No, oh, no, I'm addressing agenda items, um, Madam Chair, with all due respect. And while it's school, too, the, um, the registrations, I'm seeing these classes, are they being paid by the board? If you want to just answer it all, you can just run it all concurrent. Let me just finish here. And that's it for now. Thank you very much, Ms. Sweaters. Next speaker. Uh -huh. The final speaker is Brian Murray. Brian Murray, 1100 Maxwell Lane. Uh, before I ask my questions, one comment. Um, if you sit out there, it's really hard to hear, so I know that this is a new forum. Do you think it's because we're not close enough, or do you think it's feedback? We'll, we'll figure it's it out. We have some reverb people back or there. something. But, okay, thank you. Uh, a few questions. Um, follow up on Ms. Wader's question about the uh, security for the winter basketball. Uh, that would be eight home, seven or eight home uh, varsity basketball men's games or boys games and probably about the same for the girls. Uh, what does this actually encompass? Does it encompass JV as well and does it encompass rec? Um, and so what are we actually paying for there? What number are you talking about, Mr. Murray? This would be under the contracts for the school year. It's, the page uh, 10 07. And then also on that same page, uh, the, uh, the Passaic County Educational Services Commission for the professional services. It specifically says here in the note that those services um, will be consistent with uh, an interlocal agreement that has not yet been negotiated. Yet this start date of this contract is tomorrow. So how can you start a contract tomorrow that needs to comply with something that you haven't negotiated already? Uh, and that might be a question for Mr. Gagliardi. Uh, that, you know, you can't say that you're going to comply with something that you haven't agreed with, and then where does that leave us when, you know, maybe we start a contract and then it's not in compliance with what we haven't yet negotiated. Uh, also, agenda item number on that one? It's right, below the, it's right below the other one, on the same page for the contract. Okay. And then, in, in, in the actual services themselves looks like professional services, technology staff assessments, professional development services, and then on-call technology services. It kind of leads me to the question of like, what do we really have in terms of technology staff currently in the district that, you know, it looks like on-call technology services, and then somebody who's going to be doing staff assessments, do we not have any senior technology person that's able to do this job, um, or you know, we're simply farming it out to someone else? And then lastly, a lot has been made about the budget and you know, what, can be, what can be saved, what can be spent, you know, you know, what we can do. And it, it really confuses me that agenda item 9.12, which is, you know, it's a small item, but it's a big item because it looks like we're paying, you know, as this is written, that we're paying someone, you know, roughly $1,800 to operate the scoreboard at the JV basketball games. Yes. You know, when, when, we, when I grew up, you know, it would be another student or, or someone or a parent that would, this is a JV basketball game and we're paying $1,800 for somebody to come in here and run the scoreboard. Now, $1,800 might not seem like a lot, but given that we're paying about $900 here for a, fail, a field trip for the gifted and talented fourth graders, um, 
that $1,800 might be able to be used for a couple more field trips and maybe we could get one of the students, the kind that uh, videotaped this, this meeting to do it for you know, 10 or $12 or something to that effect. Uh, that's all I have, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, would uh, the administration uh, want to make any comments? I think um, in terms of the technology services, Seiko Tech does offer some assistance and um, we want to perform an audit as part of the major district goal to see if we're doing the right thing and see how our, our people are performing and they will assist us with that. Uh, and again, you know, part of the goal, Brian, is to, is to evaluate and see where we are right now with the current status and then make recommendations for the future. So, so we, we felt that um, they're able to provide those services for us and help us out in that. Yes, Ms. Mr. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and, and Dr. Hernandez, you might, since you were in the district a little longer, there has always been police presence at basketball games in, in the past few years, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, thank you. And uh, we've always paid for it, 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 it was never, Gratuity that they showed up, correct? Correct. It, uh, we always paid for, for their presence at the games. It was never free, correct? It's always, in all my experience in every district I've been in, all K-12 districts do have police presence at ball games, and it's always paid. Correct. Dr. Hernandez, would you like to comment? Yes, I, I agree with uh, Dr. Brockell. That is true. We do pay for uh, security at games for football and basketball. Right. Yes. Okay. Thank you. It's common Thank you. practice. And yes, Ms. Sokolov? And it's um, on an as-needed basis. Um, so some events may require one, you know, some other games or if it's Depending on the size. Right, right. as needed, yeah. Depending on the... On the expected size. And we, and we, of course, know, because we have a history of playing the different teams, we know what kind of, uh, if 100 people come or if exactly two right. people come. Right. Yeah. Any questions over here? No? Then... Uh, Let's, uh, I, is there a motion to vote on a consent agenda? But motion. first. Madam President. Yes. May, we want to pull nine point. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to comment. I think, uh, Miguel, you're about to say the same thing that I was going to say. Before we get into the action item vote, we do have to pull one item. It's uh, item 9.19, and it's the approval of students to school choice pending NJDOE. There's some confusion at the state right now about conversion students versus, versus choice students. I so, was going to ask that question. Yeah, so, so we need to pull that uh, pending further clarification from the State Department. And Dr. Barkel, that's because uh, this new school choice cap that's in place, correct? Because I was going to ask that question. Where It seems like every month we're, we're uh, creating uh, resident students into school choice students. Right. Well, and the, the state has capped it. I'm sorry. The state, yeah, the State Department's a little confused itself on, you know, the conversions versus, versus the choice and the cap and the funding and the whole package. So um, we, we need to pull that pending further clarification. Right, right. And I guess the confusion comes, is it the cap for new students coming in or yes. are the, these resident students technically new chart, uh, choice students, rather, right. coming in? So I appreciate you pulling that in. Okay. Um, since these students are already going to our yeah. school and are happy with it and are... We allow, we allow them to stay. I know and are a good representative of it, is there any danger the state might get in the way of us taking them back? No, they, they, they're people who moved who are currently attending. And so it's not, we're, there's we no are, jeopardy in terms of them not being able to continue? No, no jeopardy at all. Okay. Okay, so do I have a motion to vote on a consent agenda minus the uh, polled uh, item? Motion. Jean Marie motion, second? Second. Uh, Ms. Sobola. Uh, Ms. Call the... Uh, Ms. Tyrell, uh, before I vote, I can make two comments regarding agenda items, correct? Yes. They're just comments. They're not yeah. going to affect my vote. Would you, just before you vote, that would be great. Great. Uh, call the vote, please. Mr. Biancomano. Like I said, two quick comments. 9.07, the approval of transfers. Um, I just want to commend the administration because uh, number 12, Mr. Uh, Mr. Delafave is on here, going from an English teacher to a gifted and talented teacher. So I want to commend on hiring or promoting or transferring from within. I uh, got to speak to Mr. Delafave several times, and I think he's a very good candidate for that position. 
and I'm glad the administration thought so as well. The second thing was 9.14, which is the approval of um, a volunteer on the Hoboken Early Childhood Committee. I received the correspondence uh, regarding the specific recommendation uh, from a member of the public basically stating uh, uh, some negative things that this recommendation was saying on social media and things like that, and I discussed it with my colleagues before coming out here, and certainly the comments uh, could hurt a segment of the population. So I wanted to just bring that up. When I did my own research before I looked, or after I looked at the uh, certain tweets that were on social, social media, I noticed that the candidate was writing very, very good things on another uh, form of media uh, regarding making sure that our students stay in this district. So I just want to caution this candidate, this recommendation that when you now, when you're going to be placed on this early childhood advisory committee, that you need to use discretion anytime you talk on social media because you are representing the whole population and not just a segment of the population. So I just wanted to point that out there. Now, my votes, I'm going to vote no on 6.01, which is the minutes, and yes on everything else. Thank you. Ms. Evans? Yes. Dr. Gold? Yes. Mr. Kluffel? Yes. Ms. Mitchell? Yes. Ms. Sobola? Uh, yes, I had a, one or two comments. One, I also wanted to congratulate Mr. Delafave. He is an amazing teacher, and um, I think he's going to do a great job on the gifted and talented. And under the resignations, I wanted to say an absolute sincere, heartfelt um, best wishes to Mr. Dobish, an amazing math teacher in the district for many, many years, and now an inspiring uh, industrial arts teacher. So I wanted to add those two things. And then there's another, um, I just kind of wanted to point this out as people flip through the agenda. There's kind of a long document called the uh, Annual Nursing Services Plan, which, you know, maybe. You might not want to look through, you think it's going to be boring, but the nurses, even in the document it says, you know, the nurses, you think, oh, maybe you go to them for a Band-Aid or, you know, they kind of take care of the kids, the, the illnesses. But if you read through this report, it's really actually an incredible thing. I mean, the, the amount of work, the, 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 the types of things that the school nurses do on a, on a daily basis, um, dealing with asthma, heart conditions, you know, uh, seizures, uh, 140 emergency care plans in the district on any given day, 109 504 plans, 228 um, children with asthma. So I just really wanted to commend the nurses, the school nurses, and kind of give them a shout out and, you know, ask you, you know, flip through that plan. It's kind of very interesting. Um, so, yes. Ms. Stromwall? Uh, yes. And Ms. Tyroller? Yes. Okay, next we will have a public, open public comment where people can comment um, on whatever they like. Uh, we have four speakers. Uh, the first individual is Dr. Carolyn Oliver Fair. Thank you. Our next speaker. Ms. Waiters. Patricia Waiters. First of all, I want to thank everyone that came out and support me. Congratulations, Peter, and all the board members. You know me very well. I stood at this microphone five years. I'm a go-getter. This is just the start. I'll be picking up petitions in another eight months. <laughs> they already have mines waiting at the door. With that being said, I never will use the word disappointed, but I have some concerns. I'm looking at the numbers from the election, and I won really heavy in the fourth, the third, and the fifth ward. And it bothers me a little bit because I have some parents here tonight from the fourth ward. And seeing that 449 parents, 385 in the third ward, 449 in the fifth ward, came out and supported me and voted for me. What's troubling with that is most of these kids depend on the public school system. And all I can say is, wow, this was one of the worst elections, and I'm so glad you brought up social media, Mr. Bionamonica, uh, 
because I always said when I run in this town, the slandering and stuff is not worth it, okay? I'm gonna call you Mr. B from now on since she think it's kind of comical that I said your name wrong. And, and when I was in the fourth ward, even being approached by my candidate, Miss Mitchell here, making sure that everything was okay, she was willing to take my picture. I mean, I was literally followed and harassed this election. And it bothers me because I sit back and I laugh because I said win or lose, I stand at the same microphone and tell these same parents, I'm not going nowhere. Now this gives me more strength. I'm like ivory soap, I will not sink. I will fight even harder. And when I'm, and when I'm attacked with negative comments, to go that low to call the deputy of elections to follow me after running five years, the deputy of elections even laughed at me and said, Patricia, they're calling complaints on you. You were so, I just say one word, is intimidation. But I'm not gonna be intimidated, and I told you before the election, I'm not intimidated by your eight to one. And I told you, Peter, the night of the election, have a strong backbone, because you're not just dealing with Pat Waiters. I see what I have to do now, and that's to involve the state. Because it's mandated by the state and federal laws to promise these kids a quality free education. And we all got off that topic. We all got off, we don't even, we take a known disregard to these kids and their concerns. And these numbers are speaking loud and clear. Loud and clear. And I refuse to see any of you run for public office in my city and sit up there and take a known disregard to these serious concerns. Okay? Now I have here tonight the school board association, some documentation that I'm gonna go do with the superintendent at a later date, and a paper that I asked when then President Gold was the president, I asked for an emergency meeting concerning these serious same parents about some serious concerns and I was denied, okay? And I know each and every one of you got a copy because I CC'd this board in its entirety and it's dated April 16, 2014. So no, it wasn't politically motivated and no, it had nothing to do with me losing the election. I'm here tonight to show you that not only do I want this entertained and I told you Mr. Superintendent, with all due respects because you just got appointed and it's kind of shaky because you get appointed by these board members. But I don't want you to feel intimidated either because you're here because you have a job to do for the children. And with this being said, I not only want this looked into that I gave to Mr. Gold about his comments, the other allegations where the audio mysteriously didn't work from the last meeting when I mentioned the ethical other behaviors that I'm looking into. Okay? Waiters, so if you address, block it up, if you, me. All right, ma'am, and another Thank thing you. too, like I spoke to you earlier, I want you to learn the lawsuit about the public meeting when the Jersey City Board got addressed. That was his rule he invented where we have to address you. I addressed the government body. It's nine of you. Okay, so it's not all about you, like I told him. So why don't you go read that Jersey City lawsuit about the public meetings, okay? Because it's not about you. I'm addressing all of you in its entirety, like this letter that was ignored. Now I'm wrapping it up to say one thing. Thanks again to every mother, everybody that supported me, numbers don't lie, I'm gonna be here and I'm holding each and every one of you accountable for your actions. And these allegations, okay, allegations I said, I said it right this time. I want them looked into and I want them taken very seriously. And I don't want no intimidation and bullying on my new superintendent because you do pick his seat. You appoint him to that seat. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wait Mrs. Waiters. Next speaker. Next spe speaker is Lynn Dansker. Lynn Dansker, 1313 Park Avenue. At the end, it was the political machine that secured two seats on the Board of Education and big money that secured the third seat. As a first time candidate, I did not have either local politicians or big money to support my campaign but I did have support from every ward in this community. And I did so the old fashioned way, by knocking on doors and speaking to families in every, every inch in this community. I may not have secured a seat on the Board of Education, but I am a winner based on how I ran my campaign. 
And for that, I'm very proud. NewJersey.com published an article today entitled, I'm sorry, it was yesterday, entitled New Jersey S School Test Score Results, How Did Your School Score? Naturally, I looked up Hoboken Public Schools to see how we scored. In every one of our public schools, in each of the grades, third through eighth, a total of 14 grades in total in our district, our school fell below the state average in both math and language arts, with only two exceptions in language arts and three exceptions in math. Scoring partially proficient, where the majority of our grades in school scored, is considered, according to the Board of Education, failing. I'll say that word again, is considered failing. Hoboken schools are failing and we are not giving the children, their families, or the Hoboken residents a school system that they deserve. The nine of you do not have all the answers or all the solutions. And if I was sitting up on the dais with you, I wouldn't have all the answers or solutions either. What I did learn during my campaign was that this community wants to help. This community wants to be part of the solution. There are teachers and administrators that have an expertise in curriculum and programming. And there are CFOs and accountants that have experience in finance. There are others that are educational lobbyists and public policy professionals that many, many want to volunteer their time to serve on a committee and help craft solutions to build a best-in-class educational system. I know because I met with these residents and I spoke to them one-on-one -on -one, and they told me as they looked directly into my eyes, they shared with me their names, their contact information, and asked me to contact them after the election. The first step for fixing a problem is admitting there is a problem. Ms. Tyroller, Dr. Gold, Ms. Sabalov, and the rest of you. I am asking you as a taxpayer, a parent, and a past candidate for the Board of Ed to admit there are still problems in our educational system. Put your differences aside take advantage of the resources we have in this community, embrace those that have an expertise that want to help, begin working collaboratively and not divisively, be open to new ideas and solutions that may not be your own. I promise you, if you reach across the table, you will be humbled by what you find. I may not have secured a seat on the Board of Education, but I do intend to work diligently to help build a best-in-class educational system here in Hoboken. I'm not sure how or in what capacity, but I do know that I owe it to my son, my friends, my neighbors, and the 1,600 or so Hoboken residents that supported me for my run. I will not let them down. I hope you will not let them down either. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next speaker is Brian Murray. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize he was speaking. Brian. Uh, Brian Murray, 1100 Maxwell Lane. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate Ms. Angley. I wish her the best of luck on the board. Um, you know, I wish, I actually uh, wish my wife could be here tonight because uh, she's traveling and it's not, but, um, you know, over the past few years I've come up uh, here at the microphone, I've spent a lot of time analyzing the numbers and, you know, I've disagreed with the direction that this board has taken in many, many different areas and I've also
disagreed with the overall direction that the board that the board is leading our schools in the future. Uh, my frustration and my passion uh, for wanting something better for my kids and the rest of the children in Hoboken has sometimes uh, been mischaracterized as uh, me coming off as angry, um, where really that is just truly frustration and anger. In uh, it's frustration and just passion instead of anger. Uh, however, this board and members on it uh, and their Kids First, Parents for Progress supporters have created an environment where my children have been harassed and bullied at school for their support of their father in his political endeavors. This goes beyond my frustration and when you want to see anger, you will see my anger. And I'm putting this board and some of its members on notice that I'm holding you personally accountable for their actions of other of, of parents, of other their children. I'm so angry I can't speak right now. I will not forgive it, I will not forget it. If you think that it's intimidation and that I'm gonna go away, actually it energizes me. My children are not going away. They're not gonna be intimidated. And it's just unfortunate that I'm even here right now speaking about this. And I guess we'll see you at the next meeting. Thank you, Mr. Murray. Uh, Mr. Moffat, was that the last speaker? Yes, it is. Um, any comments before we close? Um, Ms. Tyrell. First, the, and first the, under, yeah, yeah, for the administration. Is there anything you'd like to say? No, not at this point. Okay. Just very, very quickly, Mr. Murray brought up a interesting point here that uh, his kids are being bullied in school and I know the state has very very strict laws in terms of children oh, being I'm bullied so I hope that we do look into it um, any allegation needs to be looked into it am I, am I right or wrong absolutely correct yeah. okay so I just want to make sure that we as a board yeah. look into it. I will um, see Mr. Murray okay quickly. thank you appreciate that um, Ms. Mitchell any comments Ms. Sobolev? Yeah, I agree, and I hope that we follow up that if he has mentioned to the teacher, because the, the first line of defense is mentioning any kind of that to the teacher or to the guidance counselor, and I certainly hope that Ms. Mr. Murray avails himself of those remedies, too. I also wanted to, um, Ms. Waiters mentioned social, social media, as did Mr. Biancomano, and I just, I didn't want there to be some kind of cloud over. I just wanted to assure people that the comments as I saw them, that Mr. Bianco showed them to me, were not racial in any manner or sexist or in sort of incendiary. It was, uh, I think it was more of a political opinion, if that's what I saw. So I just wanted to, you know, didn't want to leave that hanging out there that it was some kind of a front on, you know, some kind of a racist or sexist remarks. Um, no, that was it. I just wanted to say that. Um, from this side, any comments? Okay. You know, I, think, I think I will finally. <laughs> I don't say an awful lot, but uh, to the person here who's talked about all the people out there with skill and talent to bring to the district, uh, that's how I ended up here. Uh, as a parent sitting at board meetings uh, and then offering my own professional expertise to the superintendent at the time, working, attending meetings, volunteering, uh, and, and, and eventually sort of taking it to its logical next step. Um, and, and that's how I got here. I don't think this district or this board is at all uh, against welcomes. I felt it myself. So if anybody is out there, uh, you know, with, with any skill or expertise, here we are. And I'm, you know, I'm looking at a predominantly empty room. No, all, with all due respect, you know, these, respect. These, these are the people who, who are here because they do care, right? And as anybody else, come on in. We moved here for the bigger audience. Thank you. Yeah. And, um, 
And another thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just before, I'd just like to make a remark before we uh, close. Interestingly enough, um, tonight I am the most senior board member at five and a half years. And it has been an interesting experience up here because you always have the feeling like you don't want to um, talk about the past because you are on the board with other members that have been here longer. But now I'm in a different place because now I've been here the longest. And I just want, there's not a single person on this board that thinks our work is done. Good. We are all working very hard to improve things. We're absolutely aware of where we currently stand. And the real, we really need to look at this, that it takes time. And there is a tremendous amount of change that has happened from April of 2009 to November of 2014. That's difference, that's changes. We've put a lot of, we've, uh, we've had the teachers, the teachers have been amazing coming with the professional development that we've done with them, the fact that they've adopted a new language series, a new math series, new books. Books were 20 years old in 2009. We had 29 repeat audit violations when we saw our first audit uh, that came to us. 29 repeat violations. After, I think, a year or a year and a half, we got an award. We had no violations. I think we had one, one violation the next time we had an audit, and it was a minor item. It had to do with a line item. And um, so there's great improvements in finance. There's great improvements in the education. There's much more support for our teachers, and our teachers have you know, given back. We've had, we have a longer school day. We have a longer school year. We have tutoring after school. The teachers are also giving back to the district. So I just want every, and the other place that we've done, there was never a capital improvement plan prior to the one that began in 2010-11 school year. We have been setting aside money in the budget to improve facilities. Before that, there was never a budget. It was just what was necessary. And that's why we had disintegrating steps on this building. There was, we weren't able to do the kind of uh, improvements that needed to be done to have our facilities be in good shape for our children. We've put labs in Connors. We've, the district, we've done major repairs like stairs and bathrooms. So, and all that has happened under, in the last five years. It, it wasn't happening before. So it's really easy for somebody to walk in and look at this district for the first time, never having paid attention before, and point fingers at things that they say needs improvement. But there's not one person on this board that doesn't agree but what the public has to understand, and I, probably everyone here does, that's present right at this moment, is that it's a work in progress and great improvements have been made over the last five years. And so I just wanted to thank all the people, as Tom said, that do come forward and help. Uh, anytime I get an email asking if they can help, I pass it on to the administration because as you know, the board is at an advisory level. We're not supposed to be uh, down where we would make people nervous, that's micromanaging, and um, people that come to this podium have never email, emailed me with offers of help, nor have I think they've reached out to any of the other boards. So in close, I just wanted to say that. I want to thank the teachers, thank our retiree, thank our administration, and thank our parents and kids that are here for helping us and uh, working with us as we work to improve things. So with that, do I have a motion to close? Motion. Motion. Second? Second. Meeting adjourned. <laughs> Very well said, Ruth. Yeah, it's neat. I'm tired of it.